Hello, everyone. Dr. Tam here today. This is episode three. three? Yes. Three. <laughs> episode three. And we are talking about leaky gut and how it affects your immune system, how it can cause autoimmune problems. You know, leaky gut, Rocky, is on the rise, isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, it is crazy. The amount of medications that are being prescribed for uh, leaky gut cause problems, which potentially could be rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. psoriatic arthritis, right? Uh, brain fog, fatigue. I mean, all this can be caused by leaky gut, mm -hmm. you know? So what are some questions out there that you have found people are asking mm -hmm. about leaky gut? Let, let's start with that. Then we'll rapid fire some answers over here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, first of all, a lot of people are asking, what is leaky gut? I mean, a lot of people talk about it, but they don't really know what it is. So what is leaky gut? Well, you know what? If you would, uh, we're going to put some diagrams on here as well. Mm -hmm. When right. you look at a gut, you see the lining. So a gut lining should usually be sealed. So when the gut lining is sealed, well, things cannot escape out and random things can't just randomly come in, right? So it's sealed off. But what happens is a leaky gut means the seal is starting to break down and then it's starting to open up. And now the floodgates are open. Mm -hmm. Things are leaking out. And imagine your colon, all that gunk in there leaking out into the body. Oh, yuck. yuck. No one wants that. <laughs> Right. right. Just the thought of that is terrible. Mm -hmm. Imagine your body experiencing it. And that's why people with leaky gut feel so terrible. Mm -hmm. Right. And why do we get leaky gut? What are the causes? Probably the symptoms even. Right. So let's start with um, how does leaky gut come along? Right. Mm -hmm. Why does the, the, the barrier break down? Mm -hmm. Number one is because of what we're putting into our body. So we have to think about the chemical response that's happening. What we're putting into the body, for example, uh, milk, dairy, casein that's in the milk, that can break it down. Mm -hmm. You have sugars that causes a lot of inflammation, that can break it down, right? You could have um, refined sugars that breaks it down. Um, there's a lot of foods that causes leaky gut could be your nightshades that can break that down as well. There could be allergies that you're not even aware of, right? That can break that down as well. You know, about 70 to 80% of the people in the world has some form of reaction to dairy, but we just don't know about it because it's not like, uh, you know, you don't, you don't get like diarrhea or constipation or something like that. And people think that, oh, it's normal. They don't feel sick. Not understanding that their gut is taking the, the grunt of it. Now, one of the first signs of leaky gut could be brain fog, fatigue after you eat, right? Um, it could be gassy in the stomach or the, the gut in your colon, very gassy. Uh, your body just feels lethargic and what happens is that the leaky gut eventually turns into a leaky brain as well. Can Toxins can get through the blood-brain barrier and cause a lot more issues. So that is some of the symptoms. Now, if you took, take a look at what are the implications of that, right? Well, your, the toxins as it leaks out is going to be processed heavily by your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, We're trying to filter all that stuff out, right? Once it leaks into the, 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 the barrier, into the bloodstream. And your body works really, really hard to try to break that down. But what happens when it can't? There's so many toxins. That's like, you know, you ever see garbage trucks come onto the street yep. and they're cleaning garbage cans out, right? Mm -hmm. What happens if there's too much garbage and not enough garbage trucks. Yep, it's going to be all over the place. <laughs> it's going to be all over the place. It's going to pile up, right? Right. It's going to stink. It's going to be yucky. Well, that's what happens sometimes. If there's so much toxins running through your body because of your leaky gut and your liver and kidneys can't cleanse it, mm -hmm. it ends up in our organs, our joints, our muscles throughout the whole body right? 
And now here's what happens. In Western medicine, we call that autoimmune disease. Your body is trying to attack itself because something foreign that didn't belong in that muscle or joint landed there. So it's going to cause an inflammation. The inflammation process is your body's way of fighting that problem. And now you get diagnosed. Oh, you have multiple joints that becomes issues, right? You know, when you were doing that research, what's it called? Fibro. Myalgia. <laughs> fibromyalgia. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's called fibromyalgia. And then sometimes it's rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. Right. Oh, you have advanced osteoarthritis. Oh, your joints are just really inflamed. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's caused by gout, yeah. you know, urea, high urea in the body. And that, that could be related to leaky gut because the worse your leaky gut is, oh, guess what? During the spring season and fall, allergies yeah. because you have high histamines because your liver can't process it little bit of histamine from the pollen boom you get hit with it right so those are the symptoms those are some of the diseases that people claim to be oh randomly randomly your body became autoimmune just out of nowhere your body start attacking itself it, it doesn't your body's a little too smart for that it doesn't just randomly start attacking itself wouldn't you agree yeah i agree i agree right and most of the symptoms that you actually mentioned are can be perceived as normal at first, especially when you're young. But, right. you know, we don't know that it's going to cause this autoimmune disease in the future. So better right. start early. Right. And yeah. speaking of that, uh, what are your recommendations to, you know, probably prevent or even make the conditions better? Great question. I mean, first, we have to get to the root cause, right? I'm all about the root cause of the problem. People come to me to try to get a second opinion. They say, hey, Dr. Tam, you know, sometimes I'm known as the second opinion doctor, yep. second right? Opinion doctor. Second opinion doctor. <laughs> and they say, well, what, what should I do? Well, first, we have to look at what caused it to begin with. Mm -hmm. You're feeding all the junk that your body didn't want, and you caused the leaky gut right? So the first thing you need to do is remove those products and food and, you know, substances out of your system. Second now is, well, the body is still damaged. You got to heal it, right? Don't go after the symptoms, go after the gut. How do you seal the gut? There is a supplement called GI Revive that we'll put a link down below. And you might be seeing on the screen right now where, it's to seal and help seal the gut lining to get it from here, right? All wide open, you know, floodgates are open mm -hmm. and it closes it and seals it up. Now it can take, the sealing of the gut can take 60 to 90 days, wow. right? So it's not something that could be, oh yeah, I'm just going to seal the gut. The, the gut didn't get all wide open mm -hmm. in, in, in a day, right? right. Like when they built those ring cameras, Rome wasn't built in a day, Yeah, right? <laughs> but the, the gut didn't, didn't open up in a day. So it takes 60 to 90 days. A lot of times then they have to heal the liver, right? Your liver needs something called glutathione mm -hmm. to heal it. You should be taking glutathione. All right. There's a liposomal one that's on the screen right now. And there's also, uh, you have to make sure you're eating at least seven to 10 cups of vegetable to make sure that you're eating enough, you're eating the good stuff, right? Fiber. That's very, very important. And lastly, there is the SPM Supreme that actually pulls inflammation out of your body. It helps with inflammation. So if you're already inflamed, you need something like that. Now, let's just say your joints are so worn down to the point where it won't come back. Well, that's where you have to look into regenerative medicine, regenerative therapy to bump up, to fill up that space again, to let your body start to uh, accelerate the healing of that area. Again, you know, there's multiple steps depending on what stage of problems you're in. Of course, the worse you're at, uh, the worse stage you're in, the more you're going to need to help the body out, right? And uh, people really need to start young. I've been telling folks to get off dairy for a long time. They don't milk, 
you know, you know that we're the only species of animals and mammals, let's just say, okay, that drinks another mammal's milk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. <laughs> You ever see an elephant drink a rhino's milk? No. No. You ever see a sheep drink a cow's milk? No. Mm -hmm. All right. You don't have a tiger drinking camel milk either. Right. Why mm -hmm. is it that as human beings, we think that drinking milk is okay or in, in ingesting dairy, right? Dairy is made for, made for who? Made for cows. cows. <laughs> it's meant for baby cows. Right. No other species, another thing, drinks milk past a certain age, right. right? Right. Horses drink and cows drink milk when they're babies. The reason why milk exists is to fatten them up, mm. okay? So they can protect themselves by getting, by fattening them up so they don't get just randomly eaten by another predator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yet we go ahead and drink milk. We're going to take the milk that was produced by a cow to fatten up baby cows. And now we're going to drink that as human beings. What do you think is going to happen to us? Right? Mm -hmm. So automatically, our fat content, our sugar content is going to blow up. Right? Because we're, we're drinking cow protein. So, you know. Probably not the best decision. <laughs> Just saying. I, I, I know. And I'm sure that a lot of our viewers are, you know, guilty, just like me, of, right. you know, loving dairy. So Right. It tastes so good. It's, it's full of right. fat. It's full of sugar, right? <laughs> right. Oh, it's, all, it's in everything. Mm -hmm. Did you know in the 30s and 40s, that's how dairy uh, came in, was, well, the, the cheese, actually. Mm-hmm came into play in the 30s and 40s because in the 30s and 40s, everyone wanted skim milk, mm -hmm. right? They wanted skim milk. So what do they have to do to make skim milk? They have to take off the fat. Mm -hmm. Well, they have to store the fat somewhere. They can't just dump it in the drain. So they star, store all these blocks of fat in these factories, refrigerator factories. So um, certain food stores, one of them was Kraft, like Kraft cheese. Yeah. That store, that company came out and says, what if we told people to put cheese on everything? Mm -hmm. Cheese on broccoli, cheese on noodles. Oh, that's how you make macaroni and cheese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have them put cheese on everything. Cheese on every pizza. If you go to Italy, you don't get cheese on every pizza. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Italy, traditional Italy pizza. And the pizza started in the Nap Napoli, Nepali, yeah. mm -hmm. right? They don't have cheese on every piece. And it's not full of stuff and ingredients. Yeah. It's like maybe a couple slices of mozzarella, like slices of real mozzarella, not mm -hmm. that sprinkle stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Slices of mozzarella, maybe a light tomato sauce, a basil. couple pieces of basil, yeah. right? And then maybe a couple pieces of meat. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You're not going to get a piece of big piece of meat on every slice. Okay. This ain't, this is, this is not your pizza hut pizza. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's how you get uh dairy. Mm -hmm. We were sold dairy. Right. Because, you know, it was easy to sell. And, and you know what? You can make a lot of milk with the cows. You can feed a lot of people one cow. So might as well make, capitalize on it. Right. Right. So, and I guess the, the real question really is, or, uh, most of the question probably, what can we do or what's the alternative for, for dairy? Oh, great question. Um, there's oat milk. Yeah. There is uh, rice milk or rice, you know, rice drinks. There's coconut milk. Mm -hmm. Almond milk can sometimes irritate the stomach because of the, um, some of the lectin that's in there. Mm -hmm. So it's sometimes harder for people to digest, right? So hemp milk is another good one. Right, these are plant-based um, milk. It's pretty much the plant-based kind of squeeze and pound down in the water, right? So that's uh, some of the stuff that is in there, and that could be a great, great, phenomenal um, alternative to cow's milk. 
and it's an acquired taste. I mean, of course, people are going to yeah. be like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I love the cow's milk. Yeah, because it's full of fat and sugar. Mm -hmm. So your body's addicted to that, right? right? But over time, you're going to get used to it. It's going to become, you know, I haven't had regular milk or dairy for I don't know how many years already, because I know it just makes me sick. Mm -hmm. You know, I get really tired and lethargic the next day and my body's detoxing. Mm, yeah. And when you're detoxing, you become really tired, really thirsty. You know, I can't think straight. Just I mean, like it's... when you do intermittent fasting, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, intermittent fasting. That's a that's a good topic right there. Right. <laughs> Probably yeah. in our next episode. Next and episode. <laughs> that is actually, that sums up even our, our tip for the day. So as much as possible, start now. If you can avoid dairy right mm -hmm. and start uh taking on the alternatives then that would be good for your gut yeah so <laughs> those are all my questions for today dr tam okay well wonderful thank you so much for bringing up these questions i think our viewers are going to get a lot of value yeah. out of this mm -hmm. you know um and people who have questions you know make sure that you you comment comment below comment right below. ask us questions you know give us a call shoot us a text send yeah. us an email one way or another yeah have a great day guys <laughs> thank right, you so thanks, much dr tim thank bye. you bye bye